Hello everyone, so we've got another smashing game for you between Stockfish 8 against Alpha Zero. Uh, in this game we're going to look at it from the black perspective because Alpha Zero is actually black in this game. And this is just another typical example of Alpha Zero's play where they sacrifice loads of pawns for the attack. But it actually gets a bit messy during the middle game when Stockfish decides to sacrifice their own exchange for one of Alpha Zero's pieces. So in the game Stockfish ends up with a lot of pawns but Alpha Zero ends up with the exchange up and eventually manages to win in over 96 moves. Obviously I think commenting on every single move is a bit tedious but we'll go through the main bits and I'll speed through the middle game to a late end game so we can see what Alpha Zero did. So Stockfish is white and they played E4, Alpha Zero plays E5. This is typically what Alpha Zero plays as black against e4. Knight to f3 from Stockfish, Knight c6 and Bishop c4, Bishop c5 and now d3. And here Alpha Zero already played a weird move. Typically here d6 and Knight f6 are played. But Alpha Zero now decides to play a6 which isn't actually seen in my opening book. So maybe one for you to play in the future actually this a6 move. Stockfish plays knight g5 attacking the f7 pawn and now Alpha Zero plays knight h6 defending the f7 pawn. Stockfish castles d6 and now a4 to stop b5 ideas from black and bishop g4 from Alpha Zero attacking the queen. Here white does have to be a bit careful for instance if queen e1 here black can play knight d4 attacking c2 and already white's in a bit of a bad position. If queen d2 to defend then black can play knight e2 check and king h1 and play knight to f4 attacking this g5 knight with the queen and of course if knight to f3 black can capture and if g take just play a move like queen h4 and black's got a really pleasant position and that knight on f4 is going nowhere at least for a long time so alpha zero would love a position like this in the game though Stockfish now just retreats the knight back to block that bishop and here Alpha Zero castles Knight d4 looks like a tempting move, but I think after knight bd2 castles c3 If black plays knight to e6 then white can play h3 and after bishop h5 It's just another game and actually black didn't really accomplish much apart from helping white develop So as I say here Alpha Zero castled And h3 is played by white to attack the bishop Bishop h5 and now c3 to stop any d4 ideas like we just um, discussed. And king h8 now from alpha 0. So, what's the idea behind this move? Well, it gets off this c4 bishop diagonal, and now black's preparing to play f5, which alpha 0 would love to play. And here, Stockfish now took on h6, doubling alpha 0's pawns on h6. But this is the type of position Alpha Zero now loves. So even though it's got the double pawns, there's an open G file where it can attack from. And also this bishop on C5 rakes down the board and is now uncontested now that white's taken black's knight with their bishop. So Stockfish played knight BD2 here, developing again. Bishop A7 from Alpha Zero to protect their important asset most likely. And now Bishop D5. So Stockfish is actually preparing for the defence already. For instance if f5 here, e takes f5 will be played and maybe knight to e7. And if the bishop takes b7, rook b8, bishop to e4 can be played to support this f5 pawn. And if d5, white can actually play b4 here. And after d takes e4, d takes e4, Stockfish would have three pawns for the piece, which um, would be quite nice. And of course black still got these doubled h-pawns and I think black's attack would be very blunted here if he went for this but Alpha Zero could have gone for this but decided not to instead Alpha Zero was now actually intelligent enough to go for a different move they played knight to e7 here instead of f5 and actually gives up the b7 pawn and the a6 pawn to gain an attack bishop takes b7 was played by stockfish rook b8 attacking the bishop bishop takes a6 so now Stockfish has just taken two pawns and Alpha Zero has sacrificed them to gain an initiative. Alpha Zero now plays f5, getting into the attack, preparing knight g6 and knight to f4. King h1 is played by Stockfish, knight g6, 
from Alpha Zero getting on with the attack. And here Stockfish takes on F5. And interestingly enough, Alpha Zero ignores this and plays Knight to F4. So what's going on? Well, Alpha Zero just sacrificed another pawn temporarily. So it's now three pawns down, but has a great attack, attacking the G2 pawn and the H3 pawn. And it will bring the heavy pieces in with rook g8 and maybe rook b to f8 at a later date. Rook takes b2 is also on the cards for black here. Stockfish now plays d4, so trying to attack in the centre. And rook takes f5 from alpha 0. So after rook takes d5, you may be asking why Stockfish doesn't just play g4 here. Well if g4, black can now play rook takes b2. And if g takes the rook on f5, Black can play rook takes d2, and if white recaptures, black just gains a nice attack with bishop takes f3, and after king h2 just play queen h4, and mate is inevitable now. If white instead captures the bishop instead, actually black's got a really nice move now, just queen a8, just eyeing up this king, and again rook takes d2 is on the cards, and white's in a terrible position, and black's got an amazing attack, so... In this position, white can't afford to play g4. Instead, Stockfish played queen to c2, attacking the rook. The rook drops back to f8. Stockfish plays rook a e1 and queen f6 from alpha 0. Rook e3 is played and queen g7, threatening mate on g2. Rook g1 defends this. And now alpha 0 plays knight to d5, attacking the rook on e3. So what happens if Stockfish plays rook e1 to retreat. Well actually this is quite nice for alpha 0 now. If it takes, takes knight b4. Black's going to try and win back the piece or gain a massive attack. So he's attacking the bishop on a6. After queen c4, d5, queen f1 to defend the bishop still. Black can actually play bishop takes d4. After knight takes d4, queen takes d4, knight to f3. Black can play rook takes f3 now. And if g takes f3, play knight takes a6. And black just has an amazing position here. Bishop takes f3 is going to be, can be played. Rook takes b2 can be played. And yeah, white's just in a bad position. And the king's really susceptible to an attack here. In the game though, this is where Stockfish now sacrifices the exchange. Instead of moving the rook away, we play bishop to b5. Blocking up the b file. Alpha Zero plays bishop g6, attacking the queen. The queen drops back to c1. And now Alpha Zero takes on e3, winning the exchange. So f takes e3. So Alpha Zero has now sacrificed the exchange with a very unclear game. This is because actually white still is two pawns up, even though black's the exchange up. So it's going to be a very unclear and unbalanced game from now on. Alpha Zero plays bishop to f7. Rook f1 from Stockfish, and now bishop d5, rerouting this bishop on this long diagonal. Bishop c4 to try and trade, but alpha 0 is having none of it, drops the bishop back to a8. Stockfish now plays a5, trying to gain an advantage with these extra pawns. e4 to attack the knight and kick it away. Knight to h2, and queen g5 to attack the e3 square. Stockfish plays b4. And Alpha Zero captures on e3. Knight g4 is played to attack the queen. After queen g5, queen e1 is played to attack this e4 pawn. Black could opt to play rook takes f1 here. So if they decide to trade and play h5, I think knight to e3, d5, bishop b5, and king g7 is actually quite decent for black. But again, it's still going to be very tricky to deal with these extra pawns. And the bishop on a8 for alpha 0 looks very bad indeed. In the game, alpha 0 played h5, kicking the knight away. Knight to e3 and now h4 to stop the advancement of any g-pawns. Maybe play queen g3 at some point. Bishop e6 is played. Bishop c6. The bishop drops back and now d5 from alpha 0, attacking the bishop. The stockfish counters with b5. Bishop b7, bishop b3, and rook bc8, a6 from stockfish, the bishop drops back, and now bishop to a4. Alpha 0 tries to close up with bishop to b6, 
and now queen g3 and the exchange of queens occurs rook to a1 is played trying to get this rook behind this pawn rook f2 attacking the knight and now knight to f1 so looks like black's going to lose this pawn on g3 but black has some counterplay rook to e2 knight to f5 and now rook to g8 so try to gang up on this g2 pawn if white takes on g3 white does take on g3 attacking the rook and the rook moves to d2 Stockfish plays rook f1 and bishop a5 from alpha 0. Now in this position Stockfish 10 actually gives this winning for black but we'll see what happens. So white plays rook f2, exchange occurs, bishop takes c3 now from alpha 0 so I feel like black's now gaining a slight advantage. h4 is played, rook f8 to pin, king e3 to unpin and bishop to e1 so black's gonna trade off pieces it seems. King e2, alpha 0 captures on g3, the knight recaptures and rook g8, king f2 and rook g4 attacking the pawn, bishop d1 and I think maybe alpha 0 could have captured this pawn with rook takes h4 and there's no concrete play, maybe knight t2, king g7, bishop b3 and king f6, I feel like black's doing absolutely fine here. Instead alpha 0 opted for e3 check. So e3 check from alpha 0, and of course if king takes e3, rook takes g3 wins a piece for alpha 0. So instead, after e3, stockfish plays king to f3, attacking the rook. And alpha 0 captures on d4, and is also attacking the d1 bishop. The bishop moves to e2, and rook b4 now, so finally getting behind these pawns. Stockfish captures on e3. Now d4 check and finally the bishop on a8 is finally opened up and you have to feel that black's doing slightly better now so it looks like alpha zero is out playing stockfish in the end game with this exchange and this nice rook. King d2, rook b2 check, king d1 and rook b3 attacking the knight, the knight moves, d3 attacking the bishop, the bishop moves and alpha zero takes on b5 and attacks this knight so it looks like Black's finally got equal pawns and is just the exchange up. Knight f4, rook a5, and g3. Rook takes on a6, the knight captures on d3, and bishop d5 is played. King d2 and bishop f7, and here after g4, king g7, and knight f2, we've seen an array of moves from both sides, and I'll just go through them quickly. So we see here eventually. Alpha zero just maneuvers around, maneuvers a rook, and just causes white a bit of problems attacking and trying to harass these two pieces. And eventually, Alpha zero finally gets control of the dark squares, and this is where Stockfish actually resigns. So, after the king comes up to d6, the knight moves, bishop g6, and h5. So, Black's family got what they wanted. They're going to park the king on g5 eventually. And after king g5, bishop e2, rook e6 check, king f2. Black plays rook e7 and here it's deemed resignable. So stockfish resigns or it's adjudicated that white is worse. And I think the plan is that black's just going to launch this c5 pawn up the board. And there's no way for actually white to defend this g4 pawn and that will be lost soon enough as well. Again, this wasn't a classic game from Alpha Zero. It's a bit of a struggle actually to win this as Black, but the key idea is the same. After Rook B8, Bishop takes A6. Alpha Zero just sacrifices the pawns and gains like a really attacking position. And I think we can learn from this. So this is very Talesque, just sacrificing pawns and gaining good squares for your pieces to attack. I think we can all learn something from this. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this analysis. Apologies for not going through every single move. I think that would have been too tedious. Anyway, I hope you like, and if you did, just give me a comment or like and subscribe to my channel. It really helps, and it's nice to be part of the chess community. Anyway, I'll see you next time for the next video.